Okay, Google Glass. This is pretty big, exciting news lately. It's a head-mounted Android device that actually runs Android. It's currently only available as part of an invitation-only Explorer program. It costs $1,500, but the consumer edition is expected this year, 2014, and Google said it's going to be less than $1,500. Uh, some analysts are expecting around a couple hundred dollars, maybe $300. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what exactly it looks like. That's what one looks like if you take it apart. That's not mine, actually. That's the website I got it from. But inside, it's got a touchpad, a 640 by 360 uh, display, 5 megapixel camera with 720p video. It runs Ice Cream Sandwich uh, Android 4.04, uh, 12 gigabytes of usable memory. That's in addition to the space taken up by the OS, Bluetooth, and wireless connection. So here's a Google Glass demo for you. So when you first attach your Google Glass to your system, you're going to see in Device Manager, you'll see other devices in Android. And this will actually happen with a number of devices, Android devices, if you don't have the USB driver installed. I'm going to show you how to uh, install a USB driver for any Android device. First thing is you need to run the Android tools. This gets installed with uh, XE5 unless you opt out of it. And if you scroll down to the bottom, under Extras, it has this Google USB driver. And if you haven't installed it, just put a checkbox here and install it. In this case, I've already installed it. And it tells you the location. It goes to a Users, Public, Documents, Rad Studio. Right there, you see the whole path. So after you've installed it, you go up that path there and make a copy of those drivers. And then what I did is I made a copy of the INF and called it Google Glass. And you edit this file. And now how you edit this file is we're going to go into the Device Manager for real this time. Now in this case, I've already got it loaded. But if this was my unknown device, I'd come into this guy and go Properties and go to Details, Hardware IDs. All right, now if you look at these strings here, and I've already got this open in my editor, and then look at this here, you're gonna notice that, that looks really similar. This is the hardware ID for the Nexus Q. This is the hardware ID for the Nexus One. Now, there's actually multiple devices that make up the Google Google Glass. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to add these lines here to look like this. So, you're going to say single ADB interface, and then it's this line here, and I take off the uh, M1 on that one. And then on this one is the composite ADB interface, and I leave the M1 on like that one there. It. So, um, a little experimentation usually, and this ends up working. I've got this to work with a whole wide variety of different Android devices, uh, including the Ouya, which I'll show you in a little bit. But very works really well to get any Google device, any Android device, to load the driver. One note is once you've edited this file, and there's a blog post I have on my website, Delphi.org, that tells you how to do this, you need to put Windows, uh, if, it's, if you're running Windows Vista, Windows 7, or Windows 8, which basically means any version or recent version of Windows, you need to put your system into a mode that allows unsigned driver support. And that's also on my website, or you can find how to put your specific version of Windows in unsigned driver mode. Once you do that, you can load this driver. And the reason you have to do that is because once this is modified, the uh, signatures are invalid because it's modified. So do that, you can load the drivers, and then you'll have your Android device show up as an Android device. And then once you do that, you can access it via ADB. So once you've done that, and you come in here to Delphi, under Target, you'll see Glass 1 show up, or whatever other Android device you happen to have. What I usually do is I just rotate uh, any of them sideways and turn off the Chrome with this button here. So rotate, turn off the Chrome. And then I also put down the uh, style book and load up the style for the uh, the dark Android, which is in uh, uh, Rad Studio 12 styles, Android dark. Okay, and the reason is is because when you're on um, Google Glass, oops, I didn't want to close that. You don't want to have the full screen a bright color. You want it to be a dark color because a dark color is off pixels and so that's translucent and then 
light colors are bright light shining right in your eye. So typically as a design point of view, you want to have mostly dark with very little light coming in. So this is a simple app that uses the motion sensor to create a level to uh, help you determine if your glasses are on level, if your head is level. So one thing this does have in it is it does have the ability to launch it via a voice command. And so how that's done is I've added the Android manifest template to the project. And now this file is automatically generated the first time you build an Android app. But I just added it to the uh, project manager to make it easier to get to. We're going to come in here and we're going to add this line here. Okay. And this is on the intent filter for our main activity. And we add this line that says, uh, Calm Google Android Glass Action Voice Trigger. And so this says, My app can be triggered by a voice trigger. And then we add this metadata for the voice trigger, telling it that this XML file, voice trigger start, defines what my voice trigger is. Okay? So those two lines are added, or a few lines here with this one, are added to your Android manifest. Then you create this XML file here, voice trigger start, and it's a XML file with one element in here, trigger, and the keyword value is what is your voice trigger? What's going to show up in the glass menu system and what is going to be the voice command used to launch your application? So you do need to make sure that this is deployed correctly. So we'll come here to project deployment and here's our voice trigger start and we put it in resource or RES XML, resources XML. And that's the location that's going to look for it. Uh, that's where all your XML files should go for uh, Android system and that's where it's referenced from here. Uh, in XML, so by de assumed resources and then XML. Okay, uh, one note on this here. So if you do end up working with the uh, sensors, this is a, a method I found, is I actually have a, uh, a list, a T-list of singles for the samples, for the X and the Y, or X and Z information. And I put my um, data that's collected, because it's motion sensor, data changed, fires, 100 times a second. So I put that data in that sample list. And then when the uh, the animation that's moving it around is not running, I will then take the average. So right here, I take the average of that list and then uh, clear the list. So right here, I get the average, clear the list, and then I... Um, display that to user, and then I use a float animation on the X and Y, X and Z position of that line to uh, move that to that position. So this is, I did a little math to figure out the space that moves around in the screen. But I set the stop value of the animation. The animation set to start from wherever the line's currently at, and then I set the stop value to the average of the last 10 um, samples and then it starts the animation. And so if the animation's running, right here, so if the animation's running, then it does not do this. As soon as the animation stops, it does it again. And so what that does is it results in a very smooth animation of that sensor information. Otherwise, it's gonna jump around all over the screen. So let's go ahead and take a look at this in action. So I've got my Google Glasses attached here, and um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and launch my app. So I'll show you the first way is if I tap here and then scroll through my list in my level. So this uses the text of what I typed as the voice trigger and displays it here along with my app icon. So I can launch it this way or I can use the voice command. So I go back to this screen and say, okay, glass in my level. And so this used the text or voice recognition of what I said to match it with my voice trigger. So you see uh, this app, nice smooth animation. Actually, you're not going to see near as smooth animation with the screen capture, but it's very, very smooth animation. And as I tip my head, it lets me see how, whether I'm on level or not. So right now I am pretty much perfectly level and looking right into the camera. So there we go. Very easy uh, to access the voice triggers 
for Google Glass and have it show up in the menuing system. And then um, once it's connected from Delphi, you just hit run and boom, there you go. You're building a Glass app. So 